He started uh, as a so well, gaming company and then Steam software company. We wanted to make Steam uh, libraries for people more valuable, wanted to make their games more valuable, wanted to make them possible to play in more places at more times. And so we actually did start out by working with other companies and seeing what we could make happen through partnerships, um, but it became clear you know, we started prototyping and more and more we started just creating devices to solve problems for customers ourselves and bringing them to market. Uh, and really Steam Deck feels like the culmination of a lot of that earlier work. Um, you know, Steam Link has proven really valuable in just establishing what it means to stream games from PCs. The Steam Controller was really valuable. It just taught us a lot about what's uh, necessary and valuable to a customer. Um, so all those earlier products really feel like they've informed this one. Earlier instantiations of prototypes that we built in-house um, didn't really have the capability that Steam Deck has to play the latest AAA games at really their default full fidelity settings. Um, and really doing that with a, you know, the CPU and GPU power that is here just wasn't, wasn't quite possible before. So we, we prototyped it, had that idea, and this is the moment where we felt like doing it with this, you know, in a, in a ba battery powered package in this form factor was finally possible. Prior to day to, to right now, like every, everything would have either been underpowered or unwieldy. Uh, and only now has the technology gotten to a point where, where it does fit. Uh, and it's actually a really similar uh, story to our VR story as well. Like VR is something that Valve had always been interested in for a while. Uh, but it was only until, what, five, six years ago that computers got good enough um, that they could be performant and people wouldn't get sick while they're in VR. So it's a, it's a really similar hardware story where we have the idea that technology wasn't quite there yet um, until it was, and then now we're able to make this thing. From those early days, we realized it was kind of part, partially a hardware problem and partially a software problem. So we started looking at, you know, how do we, what, what parts of this puzzle do we need to fill in? And I mean, I think very early on, we were talking with hardware partners, wondering if, you know, they were going to fill some part of this. And more and more, it just became kind of clear, like the more of this we're doing internally, the, the more we can kind of make a complete package. Um, and so we slowly started spinning that up. We've thought from the beginning that we should really run our hardware business in a similar way to what we do in software. And that really is to treat it as a carrier of, I mean, conceptually, just of value. So we update all of our hardware uh, pieces. You know, this, this is sort of obvious because it's a PC. The Steam Deck uh, is something that, of course, will receive all the updates that we make to Steam on any platform. will show up here. Uh, but in the past, you know, a controller or a streaming device isn't something that you would necessarily think should receive regular software updates. Um, but treating each device that we've shipped so far as a, as a vehicle that we can update and add more value to over time uh, is definitely something that helped inform our understanding. Like we wouldn't have learned as much from shipping uh, you know, the controller or, or uh, Steam Link or even Steam Machines um, as, we, as we did by treating them all like a service and, and delivering more value over time. Back when we were first working on the Steam Controller and the Steam Link, we, had, we were both working on those at the same time, but the very early versions of the Steam Controller had a small screen in the middle of it with the idea that it would be a programmable screen, which eventually became, you know, we realized we could do all those same sort of th sorts of things on the touch pads themselves. At the time, we were like, you know, we could just take Steam Link hardware, put it in a Steam Controller, and make the screen show the Link thing. And, you know, of course, there's all these other technical hurdles at the time and everything, and we knew we wanted to actually be able to run things locally on the device but there was like that, that far back we, we were actually talking about that sort of thing as like that could be a thing um, and so eventually like we started prototyping eventually yeah, yeah we did head down all of these paths and everything and yeah. it's only recently that we've kind of crossed this sort of tipping point where the actual hardware to run full-blown PC games in this sort of form factor has really gotten to the point where we felt like it was really there I mean, when we say culmination, we really mean like it's not only the culmination of like the hardware that we build, but also the experience that our team members uh, gained while making hard hardware yeah. products. So, uh, yeah, like I said, the speakers are taken directly from all of our audio work with the uh, Index over-ear speakers. 
Uh, all the controllers, I mean, we've made controllers now for a while, from the Steam controller to the Index controller, now to this. Um, pioneering a bunch of stuff with capacitive touch and track pads um, and, gyros, and gyros and haptics, like all of it is stuff that we've done before and we're just drawing on all that uh, prior experience to, to make this device uh, as good as we can make it. On the software side, there's been a bunch of things that have just been an active development for a long time now, uh, many years. So like, you know, between the, the input part of it, the streaming part, the, um, the uh, Proton part of it, like all bringing all those things together where they all, again, started hitting these crucial sort of inflection points of like, okay, they're, they're finally there where this can all actually work. Um, it, it kind of took a little while to, to get all of the pieces fully in the same place, but you know, we've sort of seen it on the horizon for a while and we've been just actively working towards it. So it's pretty exciting to see it all finally coming together. Yeah. It was really important for us uh, to be able to talk directly to developers and say, hey, look, the Steam Deck runs your game. It, you don't have to port. There was always kind of this classic chicken and egg problem with the Steam Machine of, of the, the content being there, of like, you know, we were yeah. trying to get into, oh, the game's on Linux, but then, you know, you had to have this, this crucial amount to actually get over this hump, but then without the user base and everything, and then you, you get into this bad cycle and, uh, you know, I think Proton was, what, that led us to down this path of Proton where now there's all these games that actually run and so you, you've sort of crossed over that, that hump and you're on the good side of it and it's like, oh, okay, things just run here now and everything's happy, right? So yeah. um, it was a sort of a thing we had to figure out and work out how to get there. Okay. Steam Machines uh, was a really good idea. The operating system wasn't quite there. The, the number of games that you could play on the system wasn't quite there and really we've looked at a lot of what we learned as boxes that we needed to check if we were ever going to talk to customers again about that category. And so we didn't really want to bring this device to customers until we felt it was ready and that all those boxes were checked essentially. Um, but definitely doing that, you know, I don't think we would have made as much progress on Steam Deck if we hadn't had that experience. And just seeing that the games are running well and at full performance really is the thing that we're trying to focus on. Uh, stories from us about how, hey, everything is going to be fine wouldn't, wouldn't suffice. So we didn't want to really come out and tell a story like that we, until this device was far enough along that all those problems uh, we could put aside and just show people the device running. Like you said, we're not just a software company. We're a company that makes games. We're a company that makes software and we run Steam. And we're a company that makes hardware. And by having all of those people under the same roof talking to each other, collaborating, uh, it just makes all of the products much better.